Hey guys, welcome back to this session and in this session we'll cover three important topics. First one is JCL procedures or PROC in which we'll talk about catalog and in-stream procedures. After that we'll talk about symbolic parameters and how you can use symbolic parameters to write your catalog or in-stream procedures. And third topic is how to use set statement to assign value to these symbolic parameters and how you can override these symbolic parameters in your catalog or in-stream procedures. So let's get started. So in layman term, a JCL procedure or PROC is a pre-written segment of code that include one or more job steps. And due to this fact only, a JCL PROC can be executed or invoke from a JCL. It cannot be executed on its own. By using procedures, the amount of JCL code you have to do is reduced, resulting in fewer coding errors and thus improve the productivity of the programmer. Now let's talk about the different categories of JCL procedures. So in general, JCL PROC is divided into two categories. First one is in-stream procedures and the second one is catalog procedures. Now let's talk about JCL in-stream procedures. So in-stream procs are the one which is actually included in the job itself. An in-stream procedure begins with a proc statement and ends with a pend statement. However, pend statement is optional. But as a practice, it is always recommended that you should use pend statement at the end of your in-stream procedure. And all the job control statement that you mention between proc and pend is treated as a part of in-stream procedure. JCL statements falling between the PROC and the PEND statement are not executed when first encounter. Instead, they are scanned for errors and retained as a temporary procedure. Any JCL statement that falls after the PEND statement are recognized as normal statement and are executed. Last but not the least, an in-stream procedure should be placed near the beginning of a job stream before an execute statement that refers to it. Now, before looking into the example, here's a question for you. And the deal is that you have to write the correct answer in the comment section. So the question is, what is the maximum number of in-stream procedure you can write in a single job? And I let you know the correct answer after discussing the following example. So here's a sample JCL that includes an in-stream proc and I would be invoking this in-stream proc within the JCL itself. So let me quickly walk you through with the sample JCL. So first two line is a job card and we have discussed in our previous slides how to write a job card. The next three line is a comment and it is always recommended that you should include precise description of what this JCL is actually doing. So in this case, I've included a short description that says JCL to calculate employee annual tax. After that, you have a in-stream proc and the proc begins with a name and a proc keyword. And always remember that you should have a proper name for a proc. Otherwise, you will not able to invoke that in your JCL. After that, you have a couple of uh, um, job control statement that is an exe statement to execute a program that is EMPATAX. Then you have a 3DD statement, two is for a data set and one is for sysout just to print the messages on the spool. And then you have a pen statement which is actually uh, mark the end of the in-stream proc. However, it is optional but it is always recommended that you should use pen statement so that you can clearly make out that this is the in-stream proc. And finally, you have step 01, which is actually an execute statement, and it is invoking the in-stream proc that we have defined in the JCL. So again, it's pretty simple. You need to just uh, uh, write the step name followed by an execute statement, and then you can just specify the proc name, or you can use proc equals to proc name. It's your choice. Now it's time for the answer. So the maximum number of in-stream proc that can be included in a JCL is 15. So let's see how many of you have got the correct answer. Now let's talk about the catalog procedures. A catalog procedure is a series of JCL statement that are stored in a partition dataset or a proc library. 
catalog procedures can be invoked by any JCL on the system. However, if you're using an in-stream procedure, then that procedure can be invoked from a JCL in which it is defined. So that's a basic difference between in-stream proc and a catalog procedure. Now the catalog procedures can be stored in system procedure library that is sys1.proclib. However, this library is used to store IBM supplied catalog procedures. You can also have catalog procedures in a private library. The name of the catalog procedure is its member name or alias in the library. So before discussing the catalog procedure example, let me ask an interview question. And if you know the correct answer, then write down in the comment section. So the question is that let's say you have created a catalog procedure and you have stored that procedure in your private library. Then how will you invoke this catalog procedure with the help of a JCL? Now let's focus on the example. The following example has two sections. The top section is a catalog procedure and the bottom section is a sample JCL that invokes this catalog procedure which is stored as a part of a PDS member. So the catalog procedure again start with a proc and end with a pend statement. And all the statement that is included between proc and pend statement is treated as proc statement and they can only be executed when the proc is invoked with the help of a JCL. Now let me explain the second section of this example. So here is a sample JCL that will execute or invoke the catalog procedure that we have discussed in the above section. So the JCL has two important steps. First one is job card which is used to specify the information related to your shop. After that you have comment section which is used to specify what the job is actually doing. And after that you have an execute statement which is actually executing or invoking the proc which is stored in the system library that is sys1.proclib. So, so far we have discussed what is a catalog procedure and how you can invoke a catalog procedure if it is stored in system library that is sys1.proclib. Now let's try to find out the answer of our interview question that in case if you store a catalog procedure in your private library, then what is the way of invoking? Are you do it in the same way or do you need some additional steps? Right. So here's a sample JCL once again and a catalog procedure. But this time the catalog procedure is stored in my private library that is tpt.prod.proclip. Now if you look at the JCL, so JCL also has the same number of steps that is a job card, comment section and then execute statement. The only additional step that I've included in this JCL is JCL lib order. So JCL lib is actually used to provide your personal PDS where you have stored the catalog procedure. So whenever you create a catalog procedure and you store it in your personal PDS, then you should always use JCL lib before invoking that catalog procedure. Otherwise, the job will fail because system by default try to look for your catalog procedure in system libraries that is sys1.proclib. And always remember that JCL lib statement should be specified after the job statement and before the first execute statement the way I have done in this particular JCL. Now let's look at the search sequence of uh, this particular example. So in this example because I've specified the JCL lib so system by default will going to search the catalog procedure in my personal PDS that is tpt.prod.proclib. And in case if catalog procedure is not present in the private library, then system will try to retrieve the catalog procedure from system library that is sys1.proclib. Otherwise, it will just retrieve it from the private library and continue the execution of the job. Now, let's talk about two important topics. First one is how to override different parameters in PROC and second one is symbolic parameters. So before we discuss symbolic parameters, let's try to understand how to override different parameters in PROC. So in general, you might have come across with a situation where you need to modify the file name or you need to pass any additional information to the program which is used in a PROC or a procedure. So in such situation, you have two options. 
First one is you go back and change your PROC or your JCL. And the second option is you can use PROC overriding technique. So the PROC overriding technique is the most preferred option and it will enable you to add, modify or nullify the values of subparameters which is used in a PROC. And with this technique, you are not required to change anything in in-stream or catalog procedures. Now let's try to understand the syntax of overriding the subparameters used on the PROC execute statement and the DD statements. If you want to override the existing value of any specific subparameter which was defined on execute statement of a PROC. So in that case, you have to specify the parameter name dot step name on which it is defined followed by the value. And in case if you want to nullify the value of specific parameter which is defined on a specific step of a PROC, then you have to follow the same process. The only thing is that you are not required to specify the value after the equal sign. And if you want to add a specific parameter to all the execute statement of a PROC, then you have to specify the parameter name followed by its value. You are not required to specify the step name because if you specify the step name, then that parameter will be added to that particular step of a PROC. If you want to modify or add DD or output statement in a procedure, then you can code the appropriate parameter on DD and output statement that follows the invoking execute statement. And if you want to nullify a parameter, then you can code the parameter without any value. That means you're not required to pass the value after the equal sign. The procedure step name is only required on the first override DD statement for a step. However, you can omit that on subsequent DD statements, but you need to remember that override must be coded in the same sequence as the DD statement in the procedure step. And in case if you want to override the output statement at a job level, then you are not required to specify the procedure step name. And before we look into the example, I would like to highlight that whenever you override any execute, DD or output statement, make sure you include all the subparameters that are not supposed to change or that will remain unchanged during this override process. So here's an example that illustrate how you can use the PROC overriding technique to override the DD statement and execute statement. And this will clearly explain what all we discussed till now. So again, there's a sample JCL and we are using the same catalog procedure that we have used in our previous example. So in this case, first two line is again a job card. And after that, you have next three line, which is actually a comment section that let you know what exactly this job is doing. So the next step is step 01, which is actually an execute statement. And this execute statement is invoking or executing the catalog procedure that is EMP TX 010. And what I'm doing is I'm just adding a keyword parameter that is time parameter to the proc. And if you see the proc and the right hand side of your screen, you'll notice that there is no time parameter. So this is an additional parameter I'm adding to a step that is EMP TX 010. And due to this reason only, I've specified the keyword time dot the step name of that particular proc that is EMP TX 010. And after that, I've specified the value. And in next step, what I've done is I've just override the DD statement. So if you notice that EMP REPT is an employee report, if you look at the catalog procedure, it has a DSN name as tp01.employfile.report. And in my JCL, I've just replaced the name with a different file. And how I've done that is that first of all, I've specified the proc step name that is EMP TX 010 DD name that is employer report followed by DD, then DSN and the data set name. And after that, you have to specify the disposition of the file, whether it would be a share, new, old catalog as per your requirement. So with the help of override proc technique, you can modify or change any of the keyword parameters which is defined on execute statement or on DD statement. In fact, you can use proc overriding technique 
to change the file name or override the file name which is defined in your catalog procedure and the best part is you are not required to change anything in your catalog or in stream procedures now let's talk about another important topic that is jcl symbolic parameters and they are very important from programmer perspective because they they with the help of jcl symbolic parameters you can write uh, catalog and in stream procedures in a more generalized way right and with the help of set statement you can set the param the value of these parameters and those procs or those catalog and in stream procs can be used across multiple jobs and you only need to just change those parameters with the help of set statement so let's begin with the definition of symbolic parameters in layman term symbolic parameters are used to write catalog or in stream procedures for general use when you use symbolic parameter you don't code the actual parameter value in the procedure instead you code symbolic parameter that can take a specific value when you invoke the procedure from the jcl to code a symbolic parameter in a procedure you use a name that start with an m percent the name can be any meaningful name you want as long as it's not a keyword parameter on execute statement for example m percent time or m percent region would not be a valid name because both are keyword parameter on an execute statement but m percent class and m percent space are acceptable names so following are the important rules that you should always remember when you are defining symbolic parameters in procedure so first and foremost rule is that you must code a period as a delimiter between the symbolic parameter name and the text that follows it if you want to code a period to appear immediately after a symbolic parameter then you have to code two period instead of a single period second important rule is that if you want to nullify the value of symbolic parameter then you can code the symbolic parameter followed by an equal sign and after that you are not required to specify any value the following example illustrate how to use symbolic parameters in your catalog or in stream procedure so in this example we have a catalog procedure which is stored in system library that is sys1.proclib and the catalog procedure name is emptx010 so the proc is actually using two data set first one is employee master with a dd name as emp master and the second one is employee report which is actually uh, with a dd name emp rdpt if you look at the data set name you will notice that instead of using a high level qualifier i've used symbolic parameter so in this case the symbolic parameter is m percent prq dot and i pass the value of this symbolic parameter when i'm calling the catalog procedure so if you look at the jcl sample jcl which is given underneath so there is a step 01 which is actually an execute statement which is invoking the catalog procedure that is emptx010 and after the name of the catalog procedure you have comma followed by the value that i want to pass to these two particular symbolic parameter so i've passed the value of class as f and uh, the value of uh, prq uh, symbolic parameter is tp01 so i hope you remember if if you look at the previous slides there i've used the hard coded value as tp01 but in this case i'm passing the same value with the help of a symbolic parameter so you might be thinking that why i'm not using m percent when i'm passing the value to these symbolic parameters so the answer to that question is that whenever you define or use symbolic parameters in your procedures so at that time you're required to specify m percent and in case if you want to pass value to these symbolic parameters from your jcl then you are not required to use m percent so you have to follow the same practice the way i've just showcased in this particular example the beauty of symbolic parameter is that you can write your procedure in a more generic or generalized way and it will help you in using those procedures in multiple jobs by only changing the value of symbolic parameters for example let's say you have a proc and a job which is running in production and you want to test that job in your test environment so what you can do is you can simply get a copy of that particular job in your test environment 
change the symbolic parameter as per your test environment and simply you can run that job. And due to this flexibility of symbolic parameters, it is always recommended that you should use symbolic parameters while writing your procedures. Now let's talk about the set statement which is generally used to assign value to these symbolic parameters. And thereafter, we will talk about how you can concatenate these symbolic parameters to create different job control statements in your procedures. The set statement is another important way to assign values to the symbolic parameter. In contrast to a PROC statement that assign default value or a procedure invoking execute statement that provides runtime value, the set statement lets you set the value of symbolic parameter at any point or time within your JCL. But remember, the set statement value can be overridden by any value that are assigned in a subsequent PROC or EXECUTE statement in that job. Now let's talk about the syntax of set statement. So the syntax is pretty simple and straightforward. You have DD name, after that you have set keyword followed by symbolic parameter. After that you have to specify the value that you want to assign to that particular symbolic parameter. And similarly if you have multiple symbolic parameters then you can use comma to provide other uh, symbolic parameter value. So if you look at the example, so again we are using the same example. So we have a catalog proc which is stored in a system library that is sys1.proclib and we are using a symbolic parameter that is m% prq and m% class. And if you look at the JCL and this time what I've done is I've used the set statement to assign class value as f and prq equals to tp01. And if you notice the step 01, which is actually an execute statement to invoke the catalog procedure, that is EMPTX010. So on this step also, I've specified the symbolic parameter class equals to G. Now in this situation, the value of class parameter which was specified on execute statement will going to override the value which was specified with the help of set statement. So this is an important point and you should always remember that. Now let's focus on how to concatenate symbolic parameters with constant value or with any other symbolic parameters and how you can use this symbolic parameter concatenation to generate various DD statements or execute statement in your catalog or in-stream procedures. Now as you know that symbolic parameters can be concatenated with, uh, with any other symbolic parameter or with any constant or with any text. So in that situation, if you want text to appear immediately after a symbolic parameter, then you must code a period as a delimiter between a symbolic parameter name and the text that follows it. And if you want a period to appear immediately after a symbolic parameter, then you have to code two parameters in a row. So the first one act as a delimiter marking the end of a symbolic parameter and the second one will act as a part of a JCL statement. For example, when you're writing a DD statement. So in that case, you need period, right? And in case if you want to nullify the value of symbolic parameter. So as always, you can code the symbolic parameter name followed by an equal sign with no value. Now let's go through the following example table to understand how you can concatenate symbolic parameters to accomplish your requirement. So this table includes four different columns. First one is serial number. Second one is concatenated symbolic parameters. Third column is a value column that will outline the value which will be assigned to these symbolic parameters. And in last column, you'll see the result. What would be the outcome after you assign the value to the symbolic parameters? So in first example, you have a DSN name followed by an equal sign and after that you have a symbolic parameter that is m% var1 and the value that I have assigned to this is tp01 so the output is tp01 so the dsn followed by equal sign will going to have tp01 once it is being translated when you run your jcl so you'll have tp01 in second example you have dsn name followed by two symbolic parameter that is var1 and var2 var2 is actually specified in simple brackets and I've assigned a value as tp01 and emp cell. So the output is dsn name equals to tp01 and in bracket it is emp cell. So in case if you want to specify a, a member name, so this is how you can concatenate two different symbolic parameters 
along with special characters to specify the PDS and its member name. Similarly, in example 3, we'll try to construct the dataset name with the help of symbolic parameter. So again, you have a DSN name followed by an equal sign and after that you have M% where 1 which is a symbolic parameter. Then you have period dot a dot file. So I've passed uh, the symbolic parameter value as TP02. So my output would be DSN name equals to TP02 dot a dot file. So this is how you can construct the data set name with the help of symbolic parameters. Similarly, in fourth example, I want to concatenate symbolic parameter with a text. So in this case, m% prc name dot lib. So you notice that there is a single dot because I want that after symbolic parameter value, there should be a text, right? So in this case, I've specified proc as an input value to the symbolic parameter and the output is proc lib. So this is how you can create the member name or dataset name 